let's convert a 2D image into 3D. The fragment of the project on the screen was used for printing a lenticular 3D image 120 centimeters wide and 2 meters high. For that, I start 3D Master Kit and add the source image to the project as a new layer. I put this layer on the zero level. Then I add a depth map created earlier to this layer. Now we can check out how this picture will look like in 3D. To do that, I set rendering parameters. Let's set the parallax value for the foreground and backgrounds, and generate a number of frames. It is enough to generate quite a few frames for a start, usually from 6 to 12. To watch the frames in the animation mode, I go to the View menu and choose Animation. I can also click on the button on the toolbar or press the spacebar. Animation allows evaluating the 3D effect. The depth map is good, so is the 3D effect. However, there are some problem areas where we see that the pixels are stretched. The reason is that the software doesn't know how the background objects overlapped by the foreground objects look like. The problem can be solved by splitting the image into layers. Let's get a closer look at the created frames to find the objects that should be singled out as separate layers. The image stretches in problem areas like trees and objects overlapped by the cathedral in the foreground. To separate the image into layers, use general purpose graphics editors. It can be Photoshop or GIMP. I like GIMP more because it saves layers with the size that equals the size of the whole image, even if the visible pixels cover a small area. It is convenient for further processing in 3D Master Kit. Here's how I work with the layers. The process of splitting the image into layers is not something special. Basic photo editing skills are enough to do that. That is why I do not consider it here. I use an image already separated into layers in Photoshop's.psd file format. The image was separated into three layers. The image in the background layer was reconstructed with the help of general tools like Stamp, Brush, and others. There's one more layer that contains a part of the roof. By the way, you can show and hide layers with the help of the icons with an eye. The third layer contains the image of the cathedral and trees in the foreground. All layers belong to one and the same image and have the mutual depth map. All layers are at level 0. The 3D effect is created with the help of depth maps attached to each layer. We already have a depth map of the whole image. Let's add it to each layer by choosing Load Depth Map in the context menu that can be opened by right-clicking. I choose the Ready Depth Map and add it to each layer. If I perform rendering right now, I will get the same results. It is because one and the same depth map is used for all layers that are located at the same level. We can verify that by performing rendering for the lowest background layer. We can see that there appeared an image, the Ghost Cathedral that was deleted from the layer but remained in the depth map. To eliminate the problem, we need to edit the layer's depth map. Our task is to conform the depth map image with the layer image. For that, we can use a third-party editor. 3D Master Kit software allows specifying the path to the external editor that will be used for image editing. It is done in the settings. I use GIMP. From the context menu, I choose Edit in External Editor. The image of the layer and the depth map attached to the layer will be exported to the external editor. It is done to make sure the depth map conforms to the layer image. For comparison, we can change depth map transparency. We need to delete the image of the cathedral from the depth map. I use the stamp tool for editing. While editing, I delete unnecessary objects from the depth map. 
After editing, I get the following depth map image, which corresponds to the layer image. To import the recent changes to 3D Master Kit, we need to save the file. Edited image layer should be saved in the same temporary file that was used to export images to the editor. 3D Master Kit will notice these changes and display a message that the layer has been changed. Now if I perform rendering, I will see that the situation has been improved. The depth map must be adapted to each layer. I should note that you do not need to change the depth map for the foreground layer. Because objects of the foreground layer correspond to the images in the original depth map. However, there's one thing. You might notice that some part of the layer is transparent while the depth map shows the whole image. It is okay. 3D Master Kit will use only the part of the depth map corresponding to visible objects of the layer. It should be noted that GIMP, unlike Photoshop, doesn't automatically reduce the layer size by the visible part of the image when saving the .psd file. It is convenient for us because we can use one and the same depth map for all the layers. There's one other important thing. You must make the depth map for foreground objects, foreground layers, a little bigger horizontally than the image of the original object in the colored image of the layer. It is because in the process of rendering image objects tend to shift. If the depth map accurately matches the object edges, they may be deformed. If object edges are distorted, the object image in the depth map must be enlarged horizontally. Also, it is recommended that you make object edges in the depth map not too sharp. Images must be a little blurred, as it is shown in this example. So, I edited depth maps for all the layers and can render again. Let's evaluate the result with new settings of the project layers. Start the animation mode by pressing the spacebar on the keyboard. The 3D image has become much more natural. There is no stretching anymore. The result looks quite nice. Let's perform rendering of the required number of frames to create a 3D image. 3D Master Kit helps us calculate the necessary amount of frames for 3D image encoding, taking into account the lenticular specification and printer resolution. Here we specify the number of lenses per inch LPI, and printer resolution PPI, that will be used for interlacing and printing. In our example, it is 20 LPI and 720 PPI. The software recommends 72 frames for rendering. The created frames are shown at the top of the software interface. Now we can turn to the lenticular encoding. However, before that, let's pay attention to some tool in the main window. This tool is called Crop Rectangle. The Crop Rectangle is used to select the fragment of the source frames that will be used to create a ready lenticular image. Parameters of the Crop Rectangle are set in the Crop Rect Settings dialog. Here we set the width and height of the Crop Rectangle. The width and height of the crop rectangle set its aspect ratio in millimeters or inches. These values will be used in the lenticular tab. We can lock the aspect ratio of the crop rectangle with the help of the checkbox. In this case, when we change the size of the crop rectangle, the aspect ratio remains the same. There is one more new control tool that appeared in the 10 version of 3D Master Kit. Parallax Measurer, or Parallaxometer. This tool helps to measure the parallax value of the ready image. Despite the fact that we set parallax values for rendering, real parallaxes that will be finally created depend on many reasons. The result can be influenced by shades used for the depth map and image cropping. Based on the experience, professionals know which parallaxes can give a good effect with certain lenticular lenses and image design. This tool allows checking parallax settings and predict the parameters of the ready image. If we come to a conclusion that we don't like the properties 3D effect of the future 3D image after we have measured the parallax value, 
we can change the rendering parameters and get the required 3D effect as a result. It should be noted that one and the same frame series can give different parallax values. Let's pay attention to the parallax values. When I change the size of the crop rectangle, parallax values also change. It is because by reducing the crop rectangle, I increase the image scale. As a result, the parallax also increases. There can be two measurers on the screen. It allows measuring both background and foreground parallaxes. Let's turn to the encoding process. I open the lenticular tab and make sure the image width and height are correct. I set the required resolution to 720 ppi. The required pitch is 20 lpi. In the advanced encoding settings, I set special registration marks. They will help to match the lenticular material with the printed encoded lenticular image. Now we can encode the image and either view it on the screen or save to a file. You might need to save the encoded image to a file if the image you create is big. It is because a lot of data are used in the encoding process. The software creates the resulting image out of all the source frames. This process is quite resource consuming. That is why it is recommended that you save encoding results for big images to a file. It speeds up the working process. Let's see how we can save the results. Apart from the encoded image, it is important to save other results of your work. The project of layers with all these settings can be saved with the help of the layers save template commands. The results will be saved in the .psdd format. This format, developed by Triaxis based on .pst, allows saving settings of layers and their order, as well as depth maps associated with them and rendering parameters. The data will be saved in one file that can be conveniently used repeatedly. We can also save the whole project together with the created frames and settings. Let's use the project save command. The project will be saved to a special .mtp format. Let's name the file and save it. In this case, there are a lot more data. The saving process takes more time. So, when we got the project saved, we can get back to it later if we restart the software. It might be necessary if we change the interface color scheme. The 10 version of the software allows us to do so. We close the software. After the restart, the software will look different. Let's open the project saved earlier. After opening the project, we see all our data and the latest settings. After we open the project, we can see the generated frames and layers that were used for frame generation in the main window. You can hide layers by clicking on the icon within an eye. Now on the screen, we only see the created frames. Let's select the last frame with a left click, and by changing the transparency with a slider, we can see the first and the last frame of the series overlapping. If we zoom in, we can see that there are flaws at the edges of generated images. The reason is that during rendering, the images shifted and the software reconstructed the image parts that were absent in the source frame. When exporting, Using the crop rectangle, we can choose the necessary image part. We can set the crop rectangle parameters in the crop rect settings dialog. Let's untick the lock aspect ratio box and expand the crop rectangle so that it includes the part of the created frames without flaws at the edges. It is also interesting how we can save the created frame series. The software allows doing so. Pay attention to the fact that when you export frames, as well as when you encode, only the part of the image within the crop rectangle is used. It is convenient because we can select the required part of the image. Then I perform exporting. Project Export Frames. The Image Export dialog allows saving image in various formats and with different parameters. For example, when saving to the .jpg format, we can set the compression level. I export frames to a separate folder.
We can also export frames to a video file in the .mp4 or .avi format. When exporting, we can set the frame size. It is especially useful when exporting video with the required size. When saving, we can also set the frame rate FPS, and cycle playback that will allow modeling the 3D effect on 2D displays. For the .mp4 format, we can set the number of cycles. Similarly, we can export frames to the .gif format. This can be useful for sending preview results to your clients, or when we want to publish video files on a website. Let's have a look at the files saved in the work process. The .psdd file includes our layers and rendering settings. We can relocate this file or send it to a colleague. I saved our project to the project folder. The project settings are saved in the .mtp file. Layers associated with the project and created depth maps are saved in separate folders. If we want to move this project, we should also move the .mtp file in folders with files. I also exported our rendered frames to a separate folder. We can see them here in the .jpg format, as well as the video file created on the basis of the generated frames. The fragment of the project on the screen was used for printing a lenticular 3D image 120 centimeters wide and 2 meters high. The resolution of the encoded image is 720 ppi, lenticular material is 20 lpi. The printed 3D photo was used at the exhibition. More info at www.triaxis.com